As we mentioned, we are learning more about how contact tracing will work in Louisiana. Governor John Bell Edwards has called it a key to reopening our state safely. Devin Bartolotta explains what it means and how it works. Louisiana has been doing contact tracing throughout the pandemic, but until now has not been ready to do so on a large scale. Now the governor says we're ready. Ramped up testing and contact tracing will go arm in arm going forward as Governor John Bell Edwards laid out Friday. They will be critically important because that's how we will uh, make our very best effort to be able to monitor the situation, see what's going on around the state of Louisiana. Under his new contract tracing plan, any patient who tests positive for COVID-19 will be asked for the names of those who they've had close contact with recently. That's household members, significant others, caretakers, or people who were closer than six feet for more than 15 minutes. Those people would get a phone call asking them to take a COVID-19 test and either self-isolate or quarantine. It's more critical than ever that we have the ability to comprehensively interview every case that's detected and identify the people who could have come into contact with those individuals. This is vital, scientists and leaders say, to figuring out how to contain the spread and get back to normal life. If we can figure out exactly how this virus spreads from person to person, we could put some steps in place to keep that from happening, at least as efficiently as it is now. After doing the same in Massachusetts, tech companies Accenture and Salesforce will lead the effort, along with potentially hundreds of Louisianans in call centers. We will also be hiring. Uh, we're going to move from 70 team members conducting contact tracing to at least 250 contact tracers, um, and we're going to expand beyond that. The governor says those call centers for contact tracing should be set up and ready to go in just a little over a week. Katie? I'm not as pretty as Katie. Uh, we want to remind you about a new study on the coronavirus in our area. Oshner has dedicated 2,500 test kits in an effort to take a snapshot of the spread of the virus in our area. If chosen, you will be tested for free. To sign up, just visit testnola.org. A lawsuit filed with the Tangipahoa Sheriff's Office blames China for the spread of COVID-19. Sheriff Daniel Edwards, brother of Governor John Bell Edwards, filed suit against the People's Republic of China yesterday. He claims the virus originated in a Chinese lab instead of a local market, as scientists have said. According to NOLA.com, Sheriff's, uh, Sheriff Edwards is requesting that the court certify the lawsuit as class action on behalf of the country's sheriffs. Since the pandemic, the Tangahoe Sheriff's Office says they've seen reduced revenue from serving subpoenas, a lack of foreclosures and sales, and reduced court fees and sales tax. According to the lawsuit, the cost to isolate prisoners and the cost to provide protective equipment have also gone up. A central pastor who defied the governor's orders by holding church service during the outbreak has filed a lawsuit against state and local officials. The lawsuit filed by Tony Spell, Reverend of Life at the Reverend, uh, or excuse me, Reverend of Life of Tabernacle Church, accuses officials of threatening threats and harassment. Spell also claims he was being watched and that his phone was tapped. According to Spell, his church's water was temporarily cut off until complaints got the water restored. The lawsuit targets Governor John Bell Edwards, Central Mayor David Barlow, Barrow, and other officials. I did want to tell everyone involved in travel and tourism here in Louisiana uh, that what you are currently doing to help slow the spread uh, will speed the day that we can uh, resume uh, more of that sector of our economy. That was Governor John Bell Edwards thanking those a part of the tourism here in Louisiana for doing their part in slowing the spread of COVID-19. But in a state that heavily relies on tourism, people are forced to find a way, if other ways, to market the industry. Mike McDaniel explains how creative campaigns are keeping us all connected. From bayous and beignets to swamps and state parks, Louisiana tourism leaders are having to adapt. How do you market an industry that's for the most part shut down? Well, it's important for us to keep uh, the content about New Orleans out there to the consumers. So that Mark Romig with New Orleans and Company says because tourism is on hold, it's more important than ever to showcase what the city has to offer. An aggressive social media campaign highlights what New Orleans was and will be again. 
We're getting some really wonderful love letters back to us uh, for people who truly miss New Orleans. Romig estimates 70 percent or more of the city's tourism workers have been either furloughed or laid off, with many hotels and restaurants closed and others operating with low occupancy. How to spotlight tourism when there isn't any can be a challenge. It's been devastating for our industry. In St. Tammany Parish, tourism leaders are getting creative to keep locals and potential tourists engaged. The St. Tammany Parish Tourist Commission is going virtual. It's truly an experience. With things like a tour through Honey Island Swamp and jigsaw puzzles to piece together iconic scenes around the parish. You know, the hospitality industry is all about greeting with, with a smile. And, you know, in our case in Louisiana, we like to give hugs. So this is kind of a, this is a virtual hug that we're, that we're reaching out with. Christina Cooper hopes connecting these scenic waterways to folks staying at home will pay off when tourism rebounds. We are very blessed to live in this beautiful parish and that we're all waiting here for people to come back and see us. Both Cooper and Romig believe tourists within driving distance will be the first phase in tourism. But even then, it won't be in high gear. We know that it's going to be slow. It's, it's going to have to be methodical. And it's going to take a, a couple of years for us to really get back to where we were. And hopefully with an even sweeter industry. Mike McDaniel, Eyewitness News. St. Charles Parish is mourning the loss of a true pillar in the community. Pastor Kendall Pierre Sr. died earlier this month after contracting COVID-19, leaving behind his wife and three children. Sharice Gibson spoke to the family who says his love went far beyond the pulpit. According to his family, Pastor Kendall Pierre Sr. was always a joy to be around and had an angelic voice. If I'm driving, Lord, I need you. And though he was called to preach at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in 2009, he's always shared a word of inspiration. He's been ministering all his life, you know, from childhood to the playground, to the pulpit, taught in the community. Uh, special guy. Father, we look forward to the best that's yet to come. A we special know. man who held a special place in the AMA Louisiana community, making his tragic death due to COVID-19 that much more painful. He was so serious about Christ, about his calling, his convictions. Sabrina Pierre, Pastor Kendall's wife, says the pastor struggled for weeks with the virus. After developing a fever and cough, Sabrina, who is a registered nurse, was concerned. I listened to his lungs and put a monitor on his finger to get his oxygen saturation levels, and his oxygen was at 83. So I knew I needed to get him to the hospital immediately. He was placed in the ICU and later hooked to a ventilator. Still, his family knew they'd have him back home soon. He was doing really, really good, but I just got a call on the second saying that he went into cardiac arrest. He would never recover. And though this family says they are devastated, they lost a husband and father, they tell me the community that surrounds this church are equally devastated because they've lost a friend, a mentor, a counselor, and coach. Kendall Pierre Jr. says his dad was a father to many. I want to be what he was to the community. A master barber, the pastor would have many leaving his shop with more than a fresh cut. A lot of people got a lot of free counseling sitting in that barber chair. <laughs> and though his death leaves a hole in the hearts of many, Sabrina and her children tell me his love was everlasting. He never uh, ran out of love for us, and he uh, he loved us equally. In Ama, Louisiana, Sharice Gibson, Eyewitness News. A tough loss for the community there. There will be a drive-by viewing on Monday, May 11th from 3 to 6. Pastor Pierre's body will be placed in the foyer of their church. The following day, there will be a private ceremony for immediate family members only. There will also is a GoFundMe set up for the family. We have a link on our website. That's WWLTV.com. Roy Horn of the legendary Las Vegas Magic and Animal Stage Act, Siegfried and Roy, has died from the coronavirus. Horn's publicist confirmed his passing late last night. It was Siegfried and Roy's nearly four-decade run in Las Vegas that made the duo world famous. In a statement, Siegfried Fickback, Fickbacher said that he lost his best friend, saying there could be no Siegfried without Roy and no Roy without Siegfried. Roy Horn was 75 years old.